Hello Riven mains and Yasuo mains alike, I'm the Nightwing, Way of Life Esports, coming at you guys with another League of Legends video. So, before I get into the video, just want to make a few announcements. League of To Me podcast should be returning this week, me and Hedgie have been talking, it's going to come back this week, it didn't stop, he got sick and busy. I was definitely sick and definitely busy around around time periods in which like I just couldn't we just couldn't correlate you know it's, it's a very different time period you guys know for us both so yeah this week we're coming back with it and it's not gonna stop and Worlds is gonna be absolutely amazing and also I'm gonna be doing a video of my end of the year review for the LCS the LCK the LPL and the LEC then after that I'm going to be doing my Worlds power rankings in in several different fashions so each player is gonna get ranked. For position, top lane, jungle, mid, AD carry, and support. So that's five videos right there. Top 20 players going into Worlds. That's another video. And ranking the teams and the team I think who's going to win the 2019 World Championship. And it's obviously not going to be Cloud9 because you got to wear the 9. But I feel like they, they are a little bit more underrated than a lot of people are actually giving them a lot of credit for. But that is just going to be, you know... We're going to have to see it in the tournament, obviously. Obviously, you guys probably know I'm going to either put G2 or SKT as my teams to win the event. But, hey, I got to go with, go with, with, with uh, what I feel like is going to be the best result for me personally predicting. And this is my first world for the channel. So, I'm very, very happy you guys get to be with me throughout this experience in my first ever world championship. Also, the minor regions. I don't know too much about the minor regions. But, I do know a little bit more than some other people do. I have watched Oceana. I do watch Oceana. And I like the, um, I thought the Dire Wolves were pretty cool for a long time, but they've kind of faltered to a certain point. So it's like, eh, Dire Wolves, what are you doing? But yeah, Mammoth made it this year for Oceana. Uh, Turkey's up there. Unicorns of Love, one of my favorite teams of organizations ever in League, man. They're going to be at Worlds for the first time. I'm so happy for them. But yeah, they're from Russia now, so they're going to get clapped and destroyed probably. But hey happens so we're gonna have to see how they pan out but yes each video from here on out is gonna be about the the minor or the major regions about the lck the lpl the lec and the lcs giving my end of the year review on the year so basically let's start with the lcs and we have bjergsen's disappointed face on the screen because we know tsm loves to disappoint their star mid laner and Obviously, we have to go with the notion of Reaper giving us Cloud9 to the main gr main stage group uh, after having to, put, to play the gauntlet for since 2015. It, it's very nice to have ourselves slotted into Worlds. You know, it's been a long time since I actually was slotted into Worlds, other than playing a you know a gauntlet for a while. So it's been quite a number of years to do that. So let's start with the LCS. So after Cloud9 got destroyed, dismantled, obliterated, murdered, gutted, Sneaky got pummeled, Jensen got pummeled, everybody just got destroyed by Fnatic last year. And a lot of people and a lot of teams uh, valued that run from Cloud9 very highly. It was a highly uh, voted by a lot of people along with the CLG 2016 run. At MSI 2016, uh, we, everybody had a lot of respect for Cloud9 going into the year. They all obviously were shown that, you know, even if you are North American, if no one believes in you, you just got to believe in yourself and you can make it that far. You can get that far. You yourself can get that far if you really try it doesn't matter if teams choke that's not your fault that's not your problem you just have to go and play your best game and coming into this year we had a lot of big roster moves some paid off some didn't we had piglet obviously you know being promoted with vulcan to clutch's main roster and we had that fiasco going on where piglet is pretty much just dated and washed up at this point and then they had to figure that out later on when they switched off for cody's son then you also had tl acquiring jensen steve paid jensen's buyout of his contract then had to pay him a salary so that must not have been cheap acquiring not only jensen tl also got core jj core jj were beaten by cloud nine and you know core jj i he's never gonna say this but you know he had a vengeance and wanting to beat cloud nine for taking genji out of the world championship by beating them when they did so core jj throughout this year got his revenge against cloud nine in you know the finals as well also you have to factor in that that was a super team that tl had built they had upgraded their roster they had kicked pole belter they had kicked olay olay to me 
had been really, really not that good. I know a lot of people call me crazy when I said that, but I really just didn't feel like he was really that good anymore. I feel like he's been massively underperforming for a very long time, and we saw that in Golden Guardians when they acquired uh, that roster. And we had a lot of other teams in North America making moves. TSM uh, acquired Turkish player Broken Blade, and then they also... Uh, uh, kicked Mithy and brought in Smoothie, who was previously on Echo Fox with Dardock, Huni, and Demonte, and uh, what's the guy's name? Um, the guy from Oceana, I forgot his name, uh, Lost. And it was like, Smoothie's gonna be on TSM? He's been on Cloud9 for so long, now he's gonna be on the rival team for TSM. So that was gonna be super hype as well. Then you have all the other rosters making moves, and you had. Pole Belter downgrading all the way to FlyQuest. You had Ole going to Golden Guardians. Froggen coming back and making his LCS debut again, obviously on Golden Guardians. He was previous on Echo Fox. Then you had CLG trying to rebound from their t horrible 2017 and 2018 years that they've actually had in the LCS. They were running with Wiggly, who was previously on Cloud9 Academy and was also on CLG Academy, getting promoted to their you know main roster. Obviously, Darshan was still playing for CLG at this current point time and we are all we all know how bad he was on clg now you also had optic they acquired crown and medios and dardock and i don't know why they had dardock and medios together didn't make any sense but optic obviously showed up in in big ways in a lot of ways i even had crown as my all pro lcs mid laner i thought he played actually really good and i i wasn't you know having anything wrong with what I said. I honestly thought he played the best out of all the mid laners in the split, in the split alone. So, you know, he was really good for me. Uh, Cloud9 having to go away from Jensen was hard, a pill to swallow, but then you looked at how Niski was playing in Europe, and then he completely transitioned back to North American LCS. Obviously, he was on Team Envious before, but that was kind of like a bad team for him. Now we're looking at this in the realm of, okay, now he's looked at as a top three, top four mid laner, which has been pretty good for him, obviously. He's done really, really well. And to look at the transition and flow of the spring split, he had a lot of bad, but he had a lot of good as well. Because North America was very, very, very highly criticized, you know, going into, the uh, throughout the whole spring split. And with that happening... We had, t we had, it was basically literally TSM, Cloud9, and TL, and then FlyQuest, but FlyQuest really just, they were on a massive losing streak, and then managed to bounce back for a fourth, obviously they beat Golden Guardians in the playoffs, in the quarterfinals, and then they got fourth on the split, when TL completely dismantled them in a 3-0 sweep, and then after that, we had Golden Guardians finally making playoffs, but then we also had Optic and Clutch going through their own struggles as well. The roster with Piglet just really, really wasn't that good. Uh, I feel like Piglet was playing not that great in general. At certain points, he was playing good. I feel like the flack that he got a lot of the times wasn't really his fault. There, there were some games he threw, but, I mean, everybody on his team threw more games than he did. I mean, Huni threw a lot of games. DeMonte definitely threw a lot of games, so it wasn't really his fault. But I just don't feel like that Clutch was the overall team for Piglet that he was really able to thrive and function on. And you saw when they got Cody Sun leading it into spring and leading it into summer. Sorry about that. Uh, they actually got a lot better and it just took a little bit of time for them to actually acclimate Cody Sun to the team. Also, Clutch Gaming went through a re basically a rebranding with Dignitas, and that was something that obviously was going to be very good for them in the future. But Echo Fox, I want to kind of talk about them just for a mo moment because they're not going to be, you know, here in uh, 2020 when we actually get to that. Is that Echo Fox, I don't know what's always been wrong with their organization. I've never, ever understood what is so wrong with them. I, You factor in, you know, Rick Fox has his influence on the team, but it's just never been exactly what most people would expect. It's just, you know, you bring in Clutch Gaming's old roster who... I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but they weren't good. You know, you brought in Apollo, Hakuho, and Solo, okay... Solo looked like he was um, like a 12th best top laner, and we had not even, you know, predicted for the split at that point. Apollo, who was consistent and good, felt completely off. Hakuo, I feel like he's the better one in the lane. He he'll most likely get he will most likely get a team moving forward over Apollo. But with Immortals coming into the league and a new team coming in to replace Echo Fox's slot, I think that you have to factor in that you know they're probably most likely going to stay together. But I feel like at that point we should just run with another bot lane, obviously as well. 
And then you brought in uh, Rush. I knew Rush wasn't going to work. Everybody was overhyping this guy to death. Oh, my goodness. I was like, he's not, he is not as good as you're thinking because you're living off, like, old highlight flash plays. I was like, he's not as good anymore. Literally, guys, the reason why I said that is because watching the LCK, when they had Rush, they would play him. He would lose the first game in a pretty convincing fashion. Then they bring in score. I know, obviously, it's a strat, but that's what the broadcast team tells you. That's what the broadcast team tells you, that, that it's a strat that coaches use both junglers. We don't know why they do that. I don't like to go off of this is what casters usually say. You got to always kind of make your own mind up when that kind of thing happens because you don't really know. Why would you take out someone who won a game? Because there are sometimes he won game one, but then they would just put in score. You know, that, that, that itself wouldn't make sense. But when Rush visibly lost and threw a game, they would just play score the rest of the series and the reason why i think they didn't take him to worlds because he really wasn't that good like he was good for a specific play style and then it wasn't really as good enough as they thought and that's why uh you know eventually they let him go because they realized at a certain point they could have just got a lot better but they didn't as we know kt rolster is a roller coaster and they went completely down to the drain so yeah rush one of the most overhyped players coming coming into spring split completely failed on mostly every expectation uh, I'm glad I was right about that. If you guys watched my pre previous videos with uh, JTH, you know I visibly said he was not going to work out. I don't, it doesn't really matter how good individually he was going to be because these other junglers were competent enough to deal with what he was going to do. And he came into the split on a bad team too, so you know his influence was not going to be as good as you just expect. Then you had Phoenix coming into the lineup again. I, I, I mean, he, Phoenix wasn't bad. You know, to be honest, I think Phoenix had something about him that was really good this split. He was consistent. He was decent. He wasn't the worst mid laner, but he probably sh is considerably the worst mid laner by what the team had shown. But I'd argue that Pole Belter was the worst mid laner leading into summer. So, you know, Echo Fox as an org, they're gone. It, no one's going to miss them, really. They had... They're the team in the org that, that in like traditional sports will have one good year or split and then maybe potentially get there, but then they completely fail. Like in 2018, they got to third on the split when they had Dardock, Huni, Adrian, and Altec. And then after that, they just started falling apart. And it's just, you kind of expect it. It's like you have your five minutes of fame and then that's it. That's it. So right after that, you have, oh, I forgot. I forgot something. I just remembered right now. 100 Thieves. Also, super, super hyped coming into the split. You had Bang, Afro, Hu He, Hu He coming off of CLG from the previous 2017 summer split. You also had Someday returning. 100 Thieves took massive fan backlash from Cody Sun and the Meteo situation. Also, you factor in Bang was paid an exuberant amount of money. And 100 Thieves didn't make playoffs. They were losing games constantly. They had a multiple a multitude of roster swaps. I thought Saligo is the literal worst mid laner we've ever put on the LCS stage. He would get absolutely destroyed in international competition. He's just really not good. I, I think that he needs, he needs a lot more time to develop on you know, the academy team, I feel like he needs a lot of more time to develop in just in general as a player. I don't think he's ready. And he looked like visibly the worst mid laner that we've ever put up on the LCS. He was just as bad as bad as Man Cloud was back on Team Coast. So, 100 Thieves, yes. I, I had 100 Thieves, um, actually, I had 100 Thieves, you know, making third on the split. And right after that, it looked like they just did it do anything because during the split for pre-predictions a lot of people had him as like top three top four possibly maybe going to rift rivals you know things like that but when it actually came to the split it was just not that way they looked horrible they looked really really bad on the terror is just not good and then the whole roster fell apart later on they brought in academy guys it was, it was a big old fiasco and it was obviously super, super horrible for 100 Thieves. But later on, we'll talk about this actual um, summer split. So, after that, most of our spring split goes on. It's a big clump in the middle. It's TSM, Cloud9, and, uh, you know, TL fighting at the top of the standings. It's pretty much like, okay, it, it was really weird. C9 uh, went, C9 2-0 TSM, then TL 2-0 Cloud9, then TSM 2-0 TL. It was like, 
what is going on here? And it's okay, but it's it's a top team, so they're gonna always one's gonna be better than the other top team, and then one of the other top teams is gonna have a strength that the other one doesn't have, and it's just a big old fiasco, you know. So we get to the playoffs. Golden Guardians uh, lose to FlyQuest, and then they have to face TL. We know how that story goes. Cloud Nine have their long-awaited rematch with TSM again. Obviously, this was a very, very close series. Uh, a lot of uh, Cloud9 through in Game 3, giving TSM a chance to have the reverse sweep. Later on, TSM and TL face off in the finals. Uh, TSM are about to, you know, 3-0 TL. And then TL come back with the reverse sweep. Uh, TSM, after that specific game, they just lost all their mojo. But we'll talk about that going into, you know, the summer split, actually. So, TL win the summer, the spring split. They are the, at that time, they, were, they had three championships. Uh, later on, TL mm, go to MSI. They face Dashing. Well, at that point, they were called Fong Vu Buffalo. It was Dashing Buffalo now. They faced Fong Vu Buffalo. Uh, they 3 0 Fong Vu Buffalo. And you're thinking going in that last MSI TL went to, if they had weaker players in mid and support, you factor in, and they almost made it out, made it out of the group. They're on a tiebreaker game. If you make upgrades theoretically you could get out of the group and that's what happens so you go into msi for north america tl on day one look good they had a weaker schedule than a lot of other teams actually it looks really rough for them at certain points you're thinking to yourself like god dang are they really gonna fail at groups again uh so later on it gets to a point where uh g2 play against tl uh tl beat g2 then uh double if Finally gets out of the group. They faced IG in the semi in the semifinals for MSI. TL actually pull off one of the biggest upsets in you know, league history. I feel like that that is the biggest upset in league history was when TL actually took down IG three to one. Nobody expected it. Nobody predicted it. And then TL make finals for North America. And that is now three times that North America has did you know really good at international events. Finally, kind of getting some momentum going here. Cloud Nine semis in twenty fourth and twenty eighteen CLG uh, finals in twenty sixteen with MSI. And then you now have TL making their uh, finals debut for North America. And I feel like that was really really good for NA. Consider how criticized the region had been throughout the entire spring split and I, it really kind of felt good to shut up some people and be like okay if we're this bad and you send that team in there and they got beat by this good team all right that's cool so right after that you go into the finals tl get absolutely destroyed just murdered crapped on by the g2 army and you get destroyed actually fun prediction i didn't get a chance to make a prediction video at that point in time i was going to predict tl uh g2 to three three uh 3-3-1 three, three, TL, actually. I was, I was going to predict 3-1. Three, 3-0 three, happened. I was going to predict 3-1. I knew G2 were the better team. I'll explain that in my um, LEC video that I'm going to do for them. After that, you go in, and then right after that, uh, TL come back to North America, and you have this, uh, the, the summer split, actually. And the summer split was a big roller coaster for a lot of teams. A lot of teams go through a consistent phase, a downward trajectory, an upward trajectory, that we had teams that were bad in spring but then did better in summer because they had time to gel together clg obviously kicked darshan upgraded to ruin and then that worked out a lot well for them hundred thieves obviously they went through another phase where they went zero four they brought in amazing obviously uh the roster looked good they almost made playoffs optic made playoffs for the first time they were having a lot of troubles then they started off four and zero optic started off four and zero then when they lost to cloud nine then at one time they fell down it's really weird certain teams mental and mental 42 come off really really weird like they'll be like like six zero and then they face like cloud nine tl or tsm and then they lose one game and then they just collapse and you're just like how could one loss break you this hard it's happened a lot of times but people just don't talk about it so i thought i'd be one of the few people to talk talk about it too it happens in every competitive region like a team's doing really really well they get beat one time one time and then they're just like done life's over life is meaningless you know right after that you had echo fox the train wreck garbage show they bought mike who paid actual money for mike young you are on crack i'm not talking about echo fox anymore they're done get that out of my face echo fox is garbage they put in oh god they put in yusui and mike young god oh my god is so bad why who paid who acclimated to pay tl for mike young's contract i want to know that person so i know i want to know never to hire that um accountant for me in my uh lineup of work ever 
All right, so FlyQuest, obviously being fourth in spring, had a massive, massive fall off. This was really horrible to watch. They looked horrible. They looked bad. They got destroyed in every single game. They randomly beat Cloud9 the second time. I think that was just an off day for Cloud9 because you saw after that, they beat TL. So you can kind of tell it was an off day for them. But yeah, right after that, FlyQuest stunk. Uh, Clutch Gaming finally got a little, a little bit better. They made... um. The playoffs again, where they faced TSM, which I'll get to in a little bit. They upgraded from Piglet to Cody Sun, which I thought was a clear upgrade in terms of what the team needed. Maybe not in my like mechanically, Piglet has some good things about him, and so does Cody Sun. But I feel like mechanically in lane, Pig Piglet is a lot more aggressive and a lot more better. But Cody Sun offers a clear distinction for what the overall team needs and then later on they got better they got rebranded basically as dignitas that their sexy little fly jersey that you guys know and love all right so after that we had clg fly quest clutch optics they said say the same they made playoffs for the first time obviously we'll talk about talk about that in a moment then you had golden guardians they were going through a multitude of roster swaps you saw Enero not being the main coach of the team and then you saw two new guys come in then you had a multitude of roster swaps who he who had actually transitioned to support came in and obviously played with fbi uh, that looked really shaky uh definitely and uh, ole obviously um you know definitely later on going back but going to cloud nine definitely uh no sorry Definitely going to Cloud9, Ole getting kicked off for who he, Keith coming up to the main roster to play with um, Ole. I thought that was uh, okay bot lane, uh, you know, it's just kind of just whatever at the, at the end of the day. So after that, that's pretty much all, all, all of the teams right there. CLG kind of make a, a case for being second or third best in the in the league. I think that CLG got that far because a lot of the other teams were kind of faltering. But I mean, realistically, so they played pretty good all all around on the split. Then, right after that, you are going into Cloud9, TSM, and TL territory. territory. But TL, there's not really much to say about them. They had a few struggles in the beginning weeks of the LCS because they had kind of an MSI hangover. And you kind of always knew they were going to bounce back. So there's not really much to say about them personally. Most of their team started standing out a lot more, actually. Impact actually started standing out a lot more. And he, I, if Core JJ and Svenskaren didn't play as good as they did, I feel like Impact could, could have been the MVP of the split. Very, very possible. Then you have Cloud9 going through kind of a rough patch a little bit, but they later on kind of bounce back. Uh, they swapped out Sneaky for uh, some games, and I'll talk about that uh, right now. I do feel like Sneaky isn't as good as people always made, out, always made him out to be. He is good at Worlds. I'm not going to take him, take away any credit there. I'm not, I'm not going to even be beginning to discredit him there. I feel like if you're Cloud9 and you want to eventually, again, win a title, I feel like replacing Sneaky would be the option you probably need to do. There's no hate towards him. I love the guy. I've talked to him literally one-on-one -on -one at the LCS. I was in front of his face. Literally, go look at my Instagram, my Twitter, go, go look at my Instagram, my Facebook. I was talking to Sneaky before. But this is about gameplay, and this is about winning championships, and this is about, you know, being a, a, a fan of the team. You gotta make an upgrade. I know that seems hard for a lot of fans to a uh, tough pill to swallow, but if you want the team and the org to be successful, just in league, just in league, every other thing they're pretty decent and they're pretty good at CSGO, kind of lol. They're pretty good at uh, Rocket League, which they're pretty known in. You have Smash, they have Mango. If you want them to be better, you gotta take the tough sacrifices. I mean, I. At a certain point, when TL had Piglet, it was probably really hard for for a pill to swallow that TL was going to lose Piglet. Well, think about it the same way with Cloud9. Think about it like this. You know, you got to have, you got to get a good ADC. I think Sneaky's consistent. And, you know, I think he's consistent. I think that you can always count on him. But if you want a star performing ADC, I think you're going to have to make an upgrade. You know, it, it wasn't his fault they lost finals. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is... You know, at a certain point, you might have to make an upgrade in ADC. That's how it's going to work. Yeah, he's been a long tenured player, but, you know, players sometimes get bad, and that's just a reality. You just got to accept. But other than that, uh, TSM, time for TSM. Oh my God, what in the actual flying mother freaker did they go through? What happened? Because, all right, so to culminate the spring split, we're going to have to bring in Rift Rivals. Now, Cloud9, sick. 
Don't really, we know they, they, they were going to suck. Uh, TL did pretty well at Rift Rivals. They got the revenge against G2. They almost beat Fnatic twice. It was like, oh, damn, TL, you get it. Good job, boys. And then TSM coming over here like, Sven's like, I mean, me beating Fnatic, you know. It's just like, something I do. Man, shut up, dude. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Oh, my goodness. Mm. TSM coming to the split. Wanting to play two junglers. I understand it more than other people do because my brain is a lot more bigger than a lot of people's is. And I remember situations very, very close. And I like to always reiterate this. Grig was supposed to be their jungler in the spring. The reason why he wasn't was because of, because of his wrist issues. Remember, Akkadian wasn't supposed to play. Grig's wrist issues, Akkadian gets thrown in. And then Grig doesn't heal until the summer split. And I felt like it was really... I, I liked what TSM did with there. I like that they gave Grig a chance. I loved it. I love that they gave Grig a chance. Because it kind of was unfair that you can't control life. You know, you can't control people getting injured. You know, that that's uh, that that was fair of them. But it came to a clear point, and this is going to be kind of controversial. I thought Grig was better than Acadian for them. I thought they looked better when they were playing with Grig. Hey, just my own personal opinion. But um, they get to Rift Rivals. They get absolutely... This is what they get at Rift Rivals. And this is like, 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 like pretend... This is somebody getting pounded. That's what they got at Rift Rivals. They got this is their butt right here, right here. This is their butt, and there's a giant fist being thrown in there. That's what they got. They got just rammed in there. They won one game against Fnatic when they're playing Dan. Let's not even count that. So with that being said, after Rift Rivals, they look horrible. They weren't even good before Rift Rivals. Let's be honest here, but it was at least bearable. This is like. Omega level bad. I know some people say they almost were going to Worlds. We'll get to that point. We'll get to that point. But it was just bad. It was just really, really bad. And then they were... Up they should have lost every single game they played. Let's be completely honest here. The reason why they did it was because every other team threw. They The other teams threw at Baron. They didn't know what Baron setups were. They didn't know what pick uh, potential were in their composition that they drafted. Let's be honest here. They realistically should not have made playoffs, but since they have a caliber of roster that can do that, they make it to playoffs. And they have a lot of issues during the split. There's a lot of drama that, that unfolds in the background. You know, Sven and Acadian, Speaker coming in, playing his first ever playoffs. And now we get to the playoff scenario. So first playoffs is we have Clutch versus TSM. Good old Clutch versus TSM. Name a more iconic duel than Clutch beating TSM in best of fives. You can't, obviously. Okay, so basically... TSM play a brand new jungler they have never used before, and I predicted they beat TSM 3-1. I mean, TSM were the underdogs going in. I don't know what people thought that Clutch weren't going to win, but hey, it's whatever. TSM get knocked out by Clutch again, which is like deja vu or something. CLG faced Optic in the actual worst best of five I think NA has ever played. Holy moly, it was so bad to watch that. And then, thank God, CLG won that. 3-0. You get to the semifinals. Cloud9 and CLG have a really good best of five. Uh, Cloud9 theoretically should have just finished it off in game three. A mechanical misplay from Zazel really did throw off the series. But it's okay. Things happen. They managed to win it. Cloud9 go back to the finals. Uh, later on, you get um, what's TL, TL facing Clutch. You never would think that Clutch could bring it to Game 5, but hey, they brought TL to 5 games, and then now you have TL making the finals again. You also have CLG and Counter Logic, uh, CLG and Clutch obviously facing off in the third place match. You think that in the third place match, that Clutch could obviously 3-0 CLG. Mental Fortitude wasn't there. They learned a lot from it, they said, and then CLG beat them 3-2. Cloud9 and TL have a really great finals. Uh, I know some people like to criticize it, but I mean, no game or finals is perfect, so just gotta take things for what they are, you know, personally. Cloud9 had a really good chance to win win Game 4 and obviously beat TL. They didn't. It didn't happen. Game 5 was a complete shellacking from TL. They destroyed Cloud9. TL are the back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back champions for Pete for North America. Then you get, and then Cloud9 obviously with regional qual and with, with the point system in general, now are our second team for Worlds. That means no more gauntlet for Cloud9. Now you get to the regional qualifier, and then now you get to the point where it's CLG versus uh, Clutch versus FlyQuest. Obviously, it was a pretty rough series overall clutch managed to pull it out 3-1 then you have clg facing off against clutch it was a it should have gone to game five but clutch pull it out then you have tsm and clutch facing off once again tsm uh having a few weeks to prepare i tsm did look better in the series and i think that people really did underestimate how 
well they could have prepped. They prepped pretty well, in my own personal opinion. They they still had things they could have worked on as, as like, you know, one person's going for a play. There's not a clear shot caller. And it's like, listen to one person. It's But just other issues that, that they face with each other, you know? So, with that being said, you also have to, have to go through of the same notion that clutches uh, were 2-0 down. They make the reverse sweep in clutch. Are our third team going to the World Championship 2019? So, yeah, TSM not going to Worlds for a second time in a row. And now... I'm going to talk about the other squads for the LCS that could make improvements. Hunter Thieves didn't make playoffs again, actually. They, you know, fall out to Optic earlier on in a tiebreaker scenario. It's really kind of unclear what they, they, they could really do. They're getting Papa Smithy now. Uh, you have FlyQuest, who just kind of just content with being, like, fourth, fifth best team. Uh, you know, that's cool if they want to keep doing that. CLG made a lot of massive improvements. Good for them. They almost got top three, top two. That's pretty good on their part. They've now challenged for that third seed, which is good. You also have uh, Optic, which is going to be changed to Immortal. So their their lineup, lineup of players is going to be completely different. Then you have uh, Clutch Gaming, which is going to be now called Dignitas. So that lineup, theoretically, maybe so, could be changing, uh, pending how their world's results happen. We know people like to change their results based off a lot of things happening in the world. And then look, looking back at everything else relating to TSM, massive roster disappointments, never settling on a jungler, uh, Bjergsen kind of falling off a little bit. You had Sven getting caught out constantly. Sven costing them a finals. Like, you know, t uh, Smoothie not being as good as he once was. You also had Broken Blade falling off from his rookie split. I think that going into this next year, there needs to be a lot of changes with a lot of these teams because you really want to make sure North America looks good. You don't want to come out here lo looking like you're some clowns. You know, but hey, it happens with a lot of these teams. So I'm really, really glad that Clutch... Cloud9 and TL are our representatives for uh, North America. At the beginning of the year, you would never had thought that Clutch could be a representative for North America at the World Championship in 2019, but here we are at last. See you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy all, and hope you guys enjoyed my um, talk about the uh, whole year review for the LCS. I know I obviously missed some stuff, and I know I obviously there, there, there's things that I could improve on for certain things that I've talked about, but just want to kind of give a general basis of what's been going on for the whole year, as there was a lot of expectations, a lot of, you know, downs and a lot of ups for North America, and I think that going into the event for a World Championship 2019, there's going to be a lot of eyes on North America in general, because there's always a lot of eyes on the, on the, on the region that hasn't really won a lot, because it's like, why are you still here? But even though I think that uh, it's going to be a really interesting thing to see, it's really, really, really cool that TL and IG could be in the same group because you know ig got third teal got first it's very 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 possible but that's all today folks uh see you guys later like comment subscribe multiple enjoy i'm the nightwing from wave esports and i'm signing out peace you guys have a great day